This is the first time a federal agency has launched an all-out probe of alleged local corruption. Lincoln Road Mall in Miami Beach is the scene of some of the missing meetings which I have witnessed and involved Dane County Circuit Judge David Gibbard, gambling figure Tony Lazar, who promotes justice to Las Vegas, and Marty Ash, who sources say is involved in the huge gambling ring. I have learned that the investigative surveillance, which began in April 1973, has established that until one month ago, bookmaking suspect Ash would arrive at Lincoln Road Mall shortly after 9 a.m. nearly every Saturday and visit either Eddie Hart's clothing store at 727 Lincoln Mall or the Lincoln Lane Barbershop across the street from Mark. My forces say that junket operator Jaime Lazar would arrive at the mall shortly before 10 and meet with Ash. Judge Whitmark's arrival at the mall was usually between 9.45 and 10. He went directly to the park, entering the store's back door on Lincoln Lane. He would be followed into the store by Ash and Lazar, who had conferred briefly in front of the barbershop. The meetings I observed in part lasted from 15 minutes to a half an hour. The men would leave the store separately, with Lazar, leaving the mall in a chauffeur-driven station wagon. Following the meetings, which I witnessed on three occasions, Judge Goodhart went to Lincoln Lane Barbershop, operated by Raymond LaFlanca, for a haircut, manicure, and facial. Investigators believe there's a connection between the Saturday meetings and a huge illegal gambling ring operating in day shop. I have also learned that the Justice Department investigation involved Dave's state attorney, Richard Gerstein. Until last December, when he had open heart surgery, Gerstein was a regular Saturday visitor to the mall, where, according to my sources, he was seen meeting with Judge Goodhart before and after the judge's conference with gambling suspect Lazar and Ash. Goodhart, a former assistant state attorney, is one of Gerstein's closest friends. Investigators, however, are, are aware that Gerstein's wife, Barbara, is employed on the mall at Saks Fifth Avenue Department Store, which could explain his weekly visit. They are also aware that Robert Winters, owner of Eddie Hart's clothing store where the mystery meetings take place, is a close personal friend of Gerstein. But WCKC News has learned that investigators have seen Gerstein meet with gambling suspect Lazar at the mall. One such meeting, logged on March 30th and reportedly attended by Flagler Kennel Club President Isidore Heck, took place in the Saks Fifth Avenue School. One reason given for the Justice Department's interest in the Gerstein at Lazar meeting is Lazar's gambling background and connections with organized crime figures like Meyer Lenz. Lazar reportedly was expelled from the Bahamas in 1969 because of his close ties to Lansky and because he was suspected of being a courier of skim money to Lansky from the Monte Carlo Casino in Freeport. Skim money is untaxed gambling revenue. Lazar was credit manager of the Monte Carlo from 1966 until 1969. His employment application with the casino listed his previous employers as North Illinois Steel Company and Louisiana Mississippi Oil Company, both of Chicago, Illinois. WCKT News has been told by a former official of the Monte Carlo Casino that neither company exists. Lazar, according to our confidential source, is a former Chicago bookmaker whose gambling background qualified him to be credit manager of the Monte Carlo Casino. The same source says Lazar, who had access to the Monte Carlo vault, made weekly trips from the Bahamian Casino to the Miami Beach Eaton Rock Hotel to meet with Lansky, seen on the left. While he could not estimate the amount of money he claimed was skimmed from the Monte Carlo, I'm told that casino profits increased $5 million in 1970, the year after Lazar was fired. The 60-year-old Lazar is presently operator of Hotel Riviera Tour, located in Miami Beach, a company that promotes gambling junkets to Las Vegas Riviera Hotel. 
Lazar has been meeting almost daily with Lansky at Wolfie Sandwich Shop at 2038 Collins Avenue. And I will have details and film of the Lansky Lazar meetings as the big news continues. WCKT News disclosed earlier in this report that the Federal Organized Crime Strike Force in Miami has launched an all out probe to determine if there are links between public officials and a multi-million dollar bookmaking operation in Dade County. One of the men under investigation is Jaime Lazar, a gambling junket operator who I've seen meeting on Saturday mornings with Dade Circuit Court Judge David Goodhart. Weekdays, I have seen Lazar at Wolfie's restaurant meeting with Meyer Lansky, the 72-year-old reputed mob boss. WCKT News secretly took pictures inside Wolfie's on April 30th while Lansky on the left and Lazar on the right had breakfast with a man identified as Jack Grill, who regularly drives Lansky to the restaurant, and a woman who's an associate of Lansky's close friend, Benjamin Sigelbaum. Lansky, often identified as the financial wizard of organized crime, is seen here giving money to a man who remained outside the restaurant during the meeting. We identified the man as Bernie Castellane, who is named in records of the Miami Crime Commission as a former employee of the late Trigger Mike Coppola, a notorious Miami Beach gambler in the 1960s. Lansky, who still faces charges of income tax evasion on income derived from money skimmed from Las Vegas casinos, has been given several continuances because of poor health. Although he underwent open heart surgery in early 1973, Lansky conducts a vigorous meeting schedule at Wolfie's where he eats a high cholesterol breakfast of bacon and eggs. I have learned that the meetings at Wolfie's have been under surveillance because of Lansky's conferences with Lazar and because of the presence at some of the breakfast meetings of Jack B. Cooper, a part owner of Flagler Kennel Club. Cooper was the subject of a WCKT investigative report last December when we reported that he held a state racing permit in 1964 while serving a three-month sentence in federal prison for income tax evasion. Cooper's meetings with Lansky could jeopardize his 25% interest in the Flagler Kennel Club. Florida Statute 550, Section 181, prohibits anyone from holding a racing permit who knowingly associates with persons commonly known as bookmakers or criminals. Cooper, seen here in the hat, has also been linked to Bobby Baker, the former U.S. Senate aide and influence peddler. He was an early promoter of Baker's now defunct user vending machine company. Another early promoter of the Baker company was Benjamin Sigelbaum, also a participant in Meyer Lansky's breakfast conferences at Wolfie's restaurant. Sigelbaum, on the right, filmed outside Wolfie's with Lansky April 29th, was named in a series of investigative reports in 1966 as a courier of skim money from Las Vegas to Lansky. Federal authorities have long suspected Sigelbaum of being responsible for investment or so-called laundering of skim money. Sigelbaum denies the charges. He was indicted in 1968 for stock fraud in connection with his interest in the Miami-based Panel Fab Corporation. He was later acquitted. Another man seen with Lansky at Wolfie's is Terry Turk Marlowe, an old-time bookmaker and frequent companion of gambling junket operator Lazar. Marlowe, whose real name is Terry Cicerelli, has an arrest and conviction record for gambling dating back to 1937 in Palisades, New Jersey. In July 1971, Marlowe was arrested for gambling along with David Martyr, a man who is a prime target in the Dade bookmaking investigation. Martyr was released from federal prison last October after serving eight months for gambling. WCKT news sources claim Martyr is currently operating out of his wife's cotton cabin dress shop located directly across the street from Miami Beach City Hall. I am told by reliable sources that Martyr uses pay phones in the area to service his customers. Bookmaker Terry Marlowe, the friend of both Martyr and Jaime Lazar, has accompanied Lazar to Lincoln Mall, where I saw him with chauffeur Morris Stein in Lazar's car, out of camera range, 
At the same time, I witnessed a meeting involving Lazar, Judge Goodhart, and Marty Ash, who investigators have fingered as a key man in the Dade County gambling operation. Very little is known about Ash, a 55-year-old former clothing salesman who now lists his occupation as retired. Ash has no arrest record, but our sources tell us he's closely connected with gambler Sam Newman, who has an arrest record dating back to 1936, showing more than a dozen convictions for violating gambling laws. WCKT News filmed Newman while he booked bets on this telephone outside National Carpet Store, which he operates at 520 Northeast 167th Street. Newman uses several pay phones near the store to call his customers, and I've learned that Ash has been seen with Newman on such occasions. During WCKT's secret filming of gamblers, we filmed a judge who last year was indicted for bribery conspiracy and is now being investigated in connection with the bookmaking ring. More as the big news continues. This is Joseph Paterno, identified by several federal and state law enforcement agencies as one of the top-ranking members of the Mafia family of New York mob boss Carlo Gambino. Paterno is one of the more than two dozen reputed racketeers who recently moved to South Florida and whose activities are being closely monitored by federal, state, and local authorities. Paterno lives in this Miami Beach home at 6475 Allison Road. Courthouse records disclose that he and his wife, Dorothy, bought the home last July for $165,000, paying $63,000 down. Paterno moved to the waterfront home from Newark, New Jersey. At the same time, the New Jersey Commission of Investigation was trying to serve him with a witness subpoena. The commission is probing the influence of organized crime in New Jersey. Paterno in 1972 was identified by New York police as Carlo Gambino's manager in New Jersey. Self-proclaimed mafia figure Vincent Teresa, who turned government informer, has identified Paterno as head of an underworld assassination squad in New Jersey. Paterno has served prison sentences for auto theft and counterfeiting, and before leaving New Jersey, he was suspected by New York authorities of being involved in gambling, loan sharking, and hijacking. In preparing this story, WCKT News filmed Paterno while he was being chauffeured by a man identified as Thomas Salvatore Molinero. The 47-year-old Molinero is also from New Jersey and has an arrest record dating to 1952 that includes convictions for gambling, threatening a life with a gun, and obtaining money under false pretenses. The 1974 Lincoln Continental occupied by Molinero and Paterno was until recently the automobile most frequently used by Paterno. The car is registered to Really Big Realty Corporation, 40 Sutton Place, New York City. The president of Really Big Realty is Howard Garfinkel a controversial South Florida real estate promoter who moved to Miami Beach from New Jersey four years ago and began acquiring millions of dollars worth of property. WCKT News disclosed last April that New Jersey authorities had uncovered numerous long-distance telephone calls from Paterno to Garfinkel's penthouse offices in the Imperial House condominium on Collins Avenue, Miami Beach. I have also learned that these same records disclose calls from Paterno to Garfinkel's Really Big Realty in New York. Garfinkel and Really Big Realty were named as defendants in a complaint filed January 14th by the Securities and Exchange Commission charging numerous federal violations in the sale of shares in a real estate syndicate organized and managed by Garfinkel. I have learned that a federal grand jury will in the next few weeks be investigating Garfinkel's connection with Joseph Paterno. Most of Garfinkel's holdings have been foreclosed or are in serious financial trouble, including the Imperial House where Garfinkel maintained offices until three months ago, and the nearby Eden Rock Hotel, the current headquarters for Garfinkel's operation. The owner of the Eden Rock is listed as Garfinkel's wife, Barbara. The Garfinkels live in this luxurious estate at 4777 Pine Tree Drive, Miami Beach, less than two miles from Paterno's home. Like Paterno, Garfinkel has also experienced the less luxurious surroundings of a state prison. 
A three-page rap sheet on Garfinkel lists a dozen arrests and four convictions, including a two-year sentence he served in New Jersey for obtaining money under false pretenses and transporting counterfeit securities. By coincidence, Garfinkel's conviction in Essex County, New Jersey, for transporting counterfeit securities occurred at the same time the Essex County Organized Crime Strike Force named Joseph Paterno as the brains behind a counterfeit securities ring. Paterno is possibly the most notorious rocketeer to flee New Jersey to avoid subpoena. He and other underworld figures are being closely monitored by at least three law enforcement agencies. The Organized Crime Strike Force of the U.S. Justice Department, the Organized Crime Bureau of the Dade Public Safety Department, and the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. One of the underworld figures being watched has been described as one of the fastest rising racketeers in organized crime. He will be subject of tomorrow's report. Emilio DeLeo, nicknamed the Count, is a former kingpin of gambling in New York, New Jersey. He fled to Florida in 1973 to escape a subpoena by the New Jersey Commission of Investigation. The 62-year-old DeLeo is identified by New Jersey sources as a member of the mafiosa family of the late Vito Genovese. DeLeo's extensive arrest record includes convictions for auto theft, robbery, conspiracy, and numerous gambling charges. DeLeo now lives in this $70,000 home at 18755 North Bay Road in Sunny Isle. The house in recent months has been the gathering place for several gambling and underworld figures. DeLeo's closest associate is his stepbrother, Ralph Delia, seen in this WCKT surveillance film, who also has a New Jersey arrest and conviction record for gambling and conspiracy. Ralph Delia lives across the street from Emilio DeLeo at 331 188th Street in a home that was purchased by Emilio last October for $34,000. Others who frequently visit Emilio DeLeo at his North Bay Road home include Frank Arima, identified by New Jersey authorities as a gambler with underworld ties, and Jack Mack, a former New Jersey resident who has a record of gambling and bookmaking convictions. Another close associate of Emilio DeLeo is Joseph Cavello, who also moved to Florida to avoid a New Jersey Crime Commission subpoena. Cavello, nicknamed Demas, has an arrest record that includes convictions for gambling-related charges and bribery. According to New Jersey police sources, Cavello took over DeLeo's gambling operations in New York when DeLeo moved to Florida. Cavello resides at the Hemispheres Condominium at 1950 Ocean Boulevard in Hallandale Beach. The building directory lists his apartment, 21P in the North Building, as being occupied by Charles Muselli, a name that Cavello has used as an alias many times. Cavello's Cadillac is seen almost daily parked in a no-parking area immediately adjacent to the apartment building. In addition to old New Jersey associates like Cavello, Emilio DeLeo has been seen in the company of reputed Dade County underworld figures. WCKT News has learned that DeLeo and two other persons with extensive criminal backgrounds were questioned by Miami Beach police during a gambling raid last September 6th. I have learned that South Florida law